but never gonna stop until helicopters are in cell blocks. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. Justice for Tyrone West. Justice for Tyrone West. Justice for all victims. I want to push back against what I see as the romanization, romanticization of love in the, uh, as a role, uh, playing a role in movements. People like to romanticize the role that love plays in movements. First of all, we're not talking about romantic love. We're not talking about puppy love. We're talking about a love that lets you come out here every week for 223 straight weeks. Because when, and if people try to get it twisted and they try to see someone who's expressing anger, and they don't realize that when you, when you love someone, and you see them brutalized, you see them oppressed, you see them murdered, you get angry. That is the proper human emotion when you see that. And that is an expression of love. And the radical left, the left in general, has allowed this kumbaya, bullshit, hippie love sort of idea to push out the discussion of radical love. Because people don't want to be associated with that, so they don't want to talk about it. But we have to talk about it, because what Tawanda has shown is that you can come out here and you can fight with love for the person that you love. And what she's done is she said, I'm going to take Tyrone West's name and put it right where it belongs, right out front and center. But I'm not going to say that that's the end of the story. When we came out here for a long time, the chant was justice for Tyrone West, justice for all victims of police brutality. Because she has enough love for her brother and has experienced enough pain that she knows that she's going to come out here every week as long as it takes in the desperate attempt that no one else has to go through this. That no one else has to live through the, the pain that she's lived through. All right, that's radical love. All right, and that's the love we need to show to, let's say, our Muslim siblings today on a day when they're going to bed last night fearing for their lives. Because who the hell knows what's going to happen in the racist country that we live in. Just wearing a turban, right? A Sikh brother or sister, non-binary sibling. And what Tawana has done is shown us how to fight with that love and take it to this place of anger and bring it back and keep it focused on love. I think that's important. The other thing that she's done is she's opened up this space. She's opened up this space where every week people come out here and they have a chance to talk. And we learn about stories that nobody else would ever hear about without Tawanda Jones and the West family. Keith Davis Jr., nobody that I know would know about Keith Davis Jr. without Tawanda, Tawanda Jones. People wouldn't keep hearing the name Anthony Anderson if it wasn't for Tawanda Jones. People wouldn't know who Curtis Deal is. And if you don't know who Curtis Deal is, Curtis Deal was murdered in February of this year in Southwest Baltimore. He was arrested three times in the first about 40 days of the year by the same unit. As he was leaving jail the last time for some bullshit charges, the judge let him go because she said, wait, you're charging him with possession and intent to distribute. Where did you find the drugs? You found them in a, in a house down the block and you arrested him over there yeah that's bullshit he's gonna get to go free and so the cops gave him one of these symbols as he left a couple hours later some cops were in a car riding by him that same unit and they said hey Curtis watch out for them guns three hours later the dude's dead in the street in southwest Baltimore this year and nobody knows his name nobody talks about him all right, but his family is feeling that every day. His mother is terrified because she has other children. And so she sends them to school out the back of the house because those same cops are patrolling her neighborhood, rolling through those streets every day. And this is not an, a unique story. Maybe it's time we listen to people. Maybe it's time we listen to poor black people when they tell us what their lives are like. Um, and I want to say real quick too for people who haven't been following Keith Davis uh, Jr. Uh, situation, uh, his sentencing date will be December first. December first. December first. Uh, that can that can play. That can that can that can move apparently according to the judge's discretion and schedule and stuff. But I just want to say like Keith Davis Jr. is the answer to a couple questions. One of the questions it's an answer to is, what did we do after the cameras went away after the uprising? That's right. Come on, talk about it. What did we do when the cameras went away after the uprising? Because right. this is the first man shot by BPD a month after the uprising. And if the community can rally behind him and stop this racist prosecution and Marilyn Mosby covering her ass, 
that's going to send a message that the community as a whole, Baltimore organizing activist, decent human being community, is going to be able to find, when we find a case and we say we're not going to let this person go to jail, we mean it. Right. And we're going to fight till they get out, we mean it. Right. Because what, they're been, what they've been banking on for a couple years now is that this is going to wrap up. And people are going to go back home and they're going to turn on fucking Celebrity Apprentice with whoever the hell they have got on now, right? <laughs>